Bonjour, mon ami. Je m'appelle uh, Jeanette. Uh, um, Donald Occasion. Uh, anyway, so... <laughs> hi. Hi, guys. I've not gone French. No, playing as Bretonia, so uh, I thought I'd give it a go. But then I remembered I don't speak French. So that's unfortunate. It's a bit unfortunate, isn't it? Yes, it is. Anyway, uh, we're going to be playing as Luan Leonke. Why? Because uh, I fancied a objective-based campaign, and uh, Bretonia have obviously got the objective of get a thousand chivalry and then do a battle, which I love. I think that's great. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, they got a lot of flavour, and I've only ever been on Crusade uh, on the channel. I played For as Rapunzel. Yes, Champion I never played as uh, Leon Kirch, so we should definitely do that. We should definitely get round to it. Um, it should be a lot of fun, especially now, because Rakarth is just to the north of Curon, up in Albion. So it means we'll actually have some Dark Elves, as well as some Norskins, and and I guess uh, Marienburg we should probably um, annex, and um, everything else. So it should be a giggle. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Lou and Leonker here, he gets 10% bonus movement range for all of his characters, and extra leader uh, leadership aura size, which is very nice. Only when when attacking, mind you, but we'll be doing that most of all. Uh, Lord effects. Lewin starts with all the knightly vows unlocked, which means that we get sort of bargain uh, troops. Any of our uh, knights will have nice and cheap upkeep. That's their mechanic. The more vows their their leader has managed to tick off, the more the knights are going to be happy to work for them um, on a budget, which is rather sweet of them. So also plus ten chivalry, kind of pointless. I just that doesn't really do anything. I don't know why that's a thing. That's just such a minimally tiny thing. I just, whatever, we get that. Also, plus eight melee attack when fighting against undead, green skins, and all forces of chaos. Now, that is a big, that is a big ability. That's the whole Lord's army. So, that's going to make our peasants even be able to hold up against green skins and the like. Uh, leadership, plus 12 when fighting against all of them, too. So, not only will we be able to actually make a dent in the enemy, we're not going to run away. So, pretty good. And passive ability, blessing of the lady, which is a, if I remember, plus... Is it 5 or 10% uh, physical resist? I can't entirely remember. But either way, it means our whole army will be blessed by the lady and uh, have her protection, which is rather nice. We'll be playing hard, hard, hard. Um, or hard, hard, legendary. Let's play hard, hard, legendary because uh, it is objective-based. And if more chaos stacks are coming at us, it just gives us more opportunity to get more chivalry out of them. And then we can take the fight to, um, you know, the, the chaos wastes for our objective or we might not go for that because we do get a choice of two errantry wars to cool by the end of the campaign but uh, we'll see if chaos has turned up or not by then we'll we'll wait and see so it should be a giggle it should be a giggle um and yeah let's get to it does war visit fair britonia this day it is no longer enough for the dukes to sit idle it is time for the flower of Britonia to unfurl and reveal its thorns. I come to his court with a wealth of knowledge that will aid this errantry war. Like the Grail companions of old, the dukedoms of Britonia will unite under the banner of their king. Greetings to you, benevolent Royak. Blessed is your rule over Britonia. Yet darkness spreads from abroad and threatens your kingdom. The threat is real. It must be faced. To the east, the greedy merchant princes of Marienburg conspire to consolidate their riches. Observe that much wealth flows into Marienburg, but very little emerges. Further south, in the Grey Mountains, 
Greenskins and dwarfs vie for control of the peaks. Whoever wins may yet cause trouble for you, my lord. Beyond, the wood elves in their mysterious forest protect their homes. Whilst at the coast, the Duke of Bordello is as unpredictable as the roiling sea and as secretive as the watery depths. Elsewhere, the unliving lords of Musilon wage war against mortal men. The bickering dukedoms ignore the looming threat, and so it falls to you to act, my liege. Only a united Britonia can face these growing perils. Raise your banner, King Leonker, and drive this evil from the world in the lady's blessed name. All right, how they play. Well, I'll get to that, won't I? My lord, the Dukes of Britonia have resided under a chivalrous code for many years. Honor this tradition. Build upon the great foundations of Gilles Le Breton and lead the knightly orders forward to glory. I will, I will. You done? He's done. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll go over how they play when we're playing. I'll point at things and go, look at that. That's a thing. And you'll go, oh, it is. And uh, we'll have a jolly good time. So um, let's, you know, get to it. Uh, so I will be doing a ridiculous French accent for uh, these, these flavor texts because it cheers me up. And uh, any regulars on the channel, um, unless you're watching this later down the line, uh, you'll know that I basically just had a whole month off from YouTube. Uh, I've not been well. And I'm still not A1, honestly. So, you know, this is why it's nice to do an objective-based one. We can just focus on something. And uh, and I wanted to get something on the go again. But I'm still I'm still not feeling my best, if I'm uh, being completely honest. So... We're gonna we're gonna have some fun with it. Um, if I if I do something silly, then yeah, I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit out of it still. So, don't you worry about it. We're in it for the fun, you know. It doesn't have to be perfect. It never is when we do our campaigns, you know. We always we always try and put story first. That's what we try and do here. So we're gonna carry on doing that. So anyway, uh, my lord, the Dukes of Bretonia have resided under a chivalrous code for many years. Honor this tradition, built upon the great foundations of Gilles de Breton, and leads the knightly orders forward to glory. So we will be doing that, getting 800 chivalry. Uh, knightly. Knightly is going to be uh, what we're what we're called once we hit that. So, as you can see, we are at war with Emile von Corden, who is the, um, I guess, the uh, the Merchant General uh, of Marienburg, I suppose. Uh, I've given him that title. I can't remember what his title is, if I'm perfectly honest, but uh, the Merchant Council, you know, that runs Marienburg, he's clearly the one they've elected to be in charge. So, right, we will be dealing with him. Uh, Bretonia and the Empire, they have had a bit of a an awkward... Um, stance with Marienburg. Marienburg bought its freedom from the Empire um, some time ago. And ever since then, uh, yeah, Bretonia's sort of had their eyes on it, thinking, oh, well, it's not part of the Empire anymore. But then, of course, the Empire kind of wants it back under their control. So they've got this sort of weird uh, Cold War going on, where they both sort of want to annex Marienburg, but Marienburg is powerful in its own right, and it's just a bit of an awkward thing in the border. It's sort of a buffer between kingdoms. and It's a right hassle. It's a whole thing. So we're going to raise tensions by taking Marienburg and that will probably upset Carl, but don't worry about it. We definitely want to get this at some point. Although I don't think we want to rush too much. I think I think we're going to take our time because we will actually have an event that will kick in next um, uh, turn. Gifts, so Thug, really, Marie Cetrus is a thug, apparently. In the criminal underworld, strength and viciousness are highly prized virtues. Sorry, she has a thug. She isn't a thug. She has one, which is still a bit thuggish, let's be honest. So, that's novel. So, Kron, we can upgrade the settlement. Then we have to, really, don't we? And as much as I'd like to get more trade goods, I would quite like to start getting a stables built so I can get some more more cavalry out of it. Although saying that, I doubt I get yeomen, so I do have some leg room. So I might wait a bit and go straight into farming. Yeah, I think I'm going to go straight into farming here. And I'm going to farm instead of industry, I think. Um, although the extra recruitment capacity, see to hold that time, ammunition and campaign movement range is all really nice from the sellers. So, you know what? Screw it. We're going to go industry. We're going to go industry in Curon, rather than farmland. We'll, we'll let Longwheel 
deal with uh, with farmland, I suppose. So that's how we're going to do this. Should be a giggle. Um, right, Emil von Corden, let's come kill you. Hey, buddy. No, 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 come, come back. No, don't you. Okay, good. So yeah, we will get an event, I was, uh, was going to say. We'll get an event next turn, which will have orcs coming for us. Which we can negate, but I don't want to. Because we're going to go farming. I did say we're going to go with industry, but this will be industrial scale orc farming. It's going to be great. So, Emil von Corden, he's just going to get completely trounced. Going to get completely trounced. Oh, we do have a bunch of mods running, by the way. Um, I would have put them probably at the start of the episode for you to see, but um, I just want to point that out in case you are listening rather than watching this content. I'm not sure why you do that, but who knows? A lot of people skip the beginning. Don't know. Okay, wonderful. So, uh, with me still not feeling completely A1, I am going to be uh, skipping doing the cinematic shots for this series, I'm afraid. Much like I did with Rakarth. I was kind of at the end of my tether, actually, with Rakarth. Uh, by the time that came around, which is why I had to I had to give up on the the bells and whistles, and uh, I will be doing the same thing here. I'm afraid to say, so you know, sorry guys, sorry. Although actually, I don't really know if it's a, a good selling point for my channel, the cinematic shots. Um, let me know actually. I might even do a poll at some point because a lot of you guys say, you know, I get the odd comment saying, "Oh, this is great," but then I also get comments if I'm doing them regularly. They say, like, oh, I can't really follow what's going on as well with them, so... I don't know. Kind of nice to introduce new units, maybe, but not always. It's it's really down to taste. But uh, what I do know is it takes hours. It takes hours to splice in all the cinematics. So, um, it's tough. If, if it's sort of 50-50, you know, people can sort of take it or leave it, then uh, it might be better spending my time doing something more productive which is a shame I do like I do like getting the close-ups perhaps I'll just have to work it into my um, you know work it into my habit to actually zoom in occasionally because you know I've, I've always recorded with cinematics in mind so I always stay zoomed out you know let the cinematics zoom in because why would I zoom in if I'm gonna be zooming in in the future you know anyway right come on boys so as you can see, uh, we are getting some nice charges into a bunch of the enemy troops here. And things are going rather swell. We suffered a little bit of damage on... Yeah, we have, we've lost one. We've lost one knight. And we have done a tremendous amount of work, actually. Okay, so these guys are a little bit stuck, actually. You know what? Everyone's running in. Lewin, you get in there. We will be losing another couple of knights, because they are getting stuck over here. Which is a shame. But, it is what it is. And I don't feel like you guys should be shooting at anything right now. I think the trebuchets are only going to hurt us, if I'm being honest. Uh, not really much point using the lion's shield, but it's dramatic, so I'm going to use it. And, let's buff you. And, yep, those spearmen couldn't handle it. So, uh, one thing that people tend to shy away from is they tend to shy away from spearmen with cavalry. But if it's just basic spearmen, and you have heavy cavalry, you can easily charge them and break them if they're on the move. You know, if they're not braced, they will take a ton of damage on the charge, and you will more than likely break them pretty quickly, so... You don't have to be too coy. A lot of people tend to be a bit too coy. But you can be pretty aggressive with heavy cavalry. You know, against the light infantry like that. Even if they do have, if, even if they do have spears, you know. It's not, not a big problem, as you're about to see. See? Oh. Yeah, just not a good day for him. That guy lost his head. You gotta, you gotta keep your head when you're fighting heavy cavalry, guys. Uh, speaking of keeping your head, you're all right there. You're all right there, Lewin. Lulu. Brilliant. Well played. I gotta say, I do love how the Bretonian Knights have a billion different colours. They look great. It's just, you know, different colours depending on what family they're from. All their unique heraldry. It's wonderful. They look absolutely fantastic. Decisive victory. My word, we only lost 12. We lost 12 people. Um, ransoming them, not very chivalrous. Executing them all, though, that's fine. Selling them back to their families, you know, that's... 
that's disgusting behaviour, but just butchering them all for no reason, that's fine. That's noble. Ridiculous. Offer redemption. These men are our kin. If they are willing to repent their actions, we should offer them a place among our ranks. Um, sure, why not? Champion of the lady. And there we have it. Oh, wonderful. That's a great thing to get early. Extra research rate for Mary Setrus. Uh, from history to anatomy to science to nothing more than the bottom of a bottle. Oh, student living. Um, God, do I just take this? Do I just take Marienburg now? The fact that I could I could just take Marienburg right now uh, is sort of ridiculous, actually. But yeah, I probably could. I wouldn't want to take Gorsal or Arnau just yet. Stop it. Yeah, is this how I'm going to play this? I wouldn't normally, but with uh, with problems in the north here, you know, with dark elves looming and things, it would be nice just to get a head start on my economy by taking Marienburg. But um, I do like the Greenskin event. Hmm. Who calls? Ooh, I wonder. You oh, screw it. We're going to take Marienburg. We're going to take Marienburg. I normally wouldn't. I normally wouldn't. I like I like playing playing the event. Also, vows, by the way. This is something we have to keep an eye on uh, for our other characters. And it is something I will forget regularly. Um, you guys will tell me in the comments. I'm sure of it. But I do tend to record a few episodes in advance. And even when you guys tell me something, I often just sort of forget when I start recording again. Um, I'm quite bad at it. But yeah, when it's, when it's a faction-specific thing like this... I tend to neglect it all the time. I really do wish they had a little um, reminder, you know, at the bottom. Like, it says research available. I wish it would say, you know, vow or troth available. I think that would be a good a good little quality of life improvement for Bretonia, but oh well. Uh, so, Root Marcher would be quite good, but I think we're going to go with Inspiring Presence first and start getting uh, Glorfinial's prodigy, uh, progeny, rather. So, the bloodline of the noblest of all steeds has been preserved. It serves us still... Um, I don't actually know who Glorfinial is, actually. I think that might have been um, Gilles Le Breton's horse, but I can't entirely remember. But anyway, we want to upgrade our knights, basically, because they're going to be doing uh, all the leg work. Also, Harmonic Convergence and, you know, going to Wind Blast and a bunch of other great spells would be nice, but I also kind of like the idea of getting magic items in a hurry. Um, you know what? Harmonic Convergence. And we're going to take Marienburg, and we're actually going to sp just farm the greenskins anyway. We're not going to attack Grunzint. We're going to loiter in Marienburg, and this is where we'll farm. All right, Karan, we're going to see if we can keep under control. Okay, but Marienburg, that's where we're going to we're going to try and farm orcs. I do have a feeling that Ugdrop Cracktooth is just going to hop over here and take long wheel or something terrible. Uh, now that I've run over here, actually, could could very well happen. We'll have to we'll have to hope. That that's not how it's going to be. Or I could just get another army over here. We'll see. We'll see. I should have money to spare. Ride Let's see. Glory. I'm kind of winging it. Um, yeah, this should be easy enough. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, it might be a little tricky. Our peasants are a bit rubbish. And we're going to be... Oh, actually, no. The Pegasus Knights are about to jump on the walls and kill everything on the walls. What am I thinking? I always forget how great flying units are in a siege battle. Anyway, let's get to it. Okie dokie. Pegasus Knights! Pegasus Knights. I, I, I do enjoy playing Bretonia. <laughs> I find the uh, voice lines completely contagious. Do you guys find that? It's same with Greenskins as well. But do you find that playing games sometimes just... It's just really satisfying to just sort of parrot the uh, the nonsense that everyone, everyone shouts. I think it's uh, a lot of fun. Alright, tell you what, Lewin, you're going to run straight in. You guys can go for them. And them. Looks like all of the... Rather nicely, it seems that all of the... Um, uh, uh, what are they called? You know the ones. Halberdiers. Seems all the Halberdiers are keeping the distance. Which is ruddy nice of them. Ah, oh, I don't like that much. We lost to Pegasus. They're not cheap, you know. They're not cheap. They are not cheap. So, Lewin is going to take a bunch of damage. That's normal. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now you can take off. Come on. Good boys. Uh, okay, one hasn't. And you're going to be a big problem, aren't you guys? Maybe. 
Oh, no, they've taken off. Ooh. Okay, we're good. Wonderful. And yeah, it seems our trebuchet is getting some work done. I can hear rocks landing all over the place. I see much. Alright, we have lost one over here. Oh, we're losing a few, actually. That's up you lot. How are you taking so much damage? It's very, very troubling. Very troubling indeed. Alright, you take off. You know what? All you lot take off, okay? We've done mad damage to those crossbows, which is wonderful to see. Alright, everyone up. Nope, not everyone yet. Now they have. No, they haven't. Yes, they have. It's hard to tell. Alright, we'll get charged into this lot. You know what? Charge these swordsmen. I like Pegs as nice. They're a lot of fun. Although, no, I enjoy the trebuchets. Ugh. Little, little much, guys. What are you guys doing there? I told you to climb the walls like an hour ago. Alright, well, uh, we have ladders on the walls. I could have told you that, game. I could have told you that. And we have lost a trebuchet. To these ruddy siege towers. Ruddy siege tower. Alright, Pegasus Knights. Up and away. Come on, boys. Okay. Now. I want these halberdiers dead. I want them dead yesterday. Spearman at arms. We're a pirate, apparently. Wonderful. So one thing I do find uh, quite fun is that Bretonia actually uh, sort of mimics um, the sort of the, the Norman conquest of uh, of Britain. So Bretonia is sort of a weird uh, France um, England medieval hybrid thing, but um, culturally it 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 sort of it fits uh, post Battle Hastings where you've got the the sort of um, the French um, sort of landed gentry. But then all of the peasants are just like, you know, British peasants. So, kind of cool. Okay. Good little charge. Nice to see. I can take off again. I would like to get in, in here, but I don't really want my cavalry charging at this stuff. And so, I'm going to have to be very busy with these, uh... Pegasus Knights, I think. Be very busy with them indeed. Okay, let's get these crossbowmen, yeah? Hmm. Alright, let's try and spare these man at arms. I really don't want them running away. I really don't. Uh, and what are you guys doing here? Just chilling, I guess. That's fine. You guys chill. It's all good. Um, and trebuchets, do you want to just attack that guy? Because that would be perfect. Instead, they seem to be aiming for Dolph Schartner here. Schartner. <laughs> but yeah, we could do some mad damage to these uh, halberdiers if we get a shot across their ranks here. Oh yeah, that's done. Wow, look at just just blood streamers from nowhere there. Yeah, so that, that was quite good. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Much better. Still some crossbowmen back here, though, which I'm not pleased about. Okay, let's get you guys up here. Excellent. So yeah, these halberdiers are having a bad, bad day. It's been a bad day. Some amazing rhymes about halberdiers followed, but my mic cut out. Honest, definitely. It's definitely what happened. I didn't just... I didn't just die on stage like that. No, no. I definitely thought of a bunch of very witty things to say. Okay, come on, boys. Let's, uh, let's get over here. I, I do find it quite amusing uh, having Pegasus Knight shouting, Take the ground. Because, you know... They're in. They're not on the ground, but now they're going to take the ground from these land lovers. I'm thinking of sailors, aren't I? Not the air force, but you know, whatever. Take that, land lover. We're sky pirates or parrots. 
because that's sort of bad. Anyway, uh, right, come on guys. Come on. No, you get up here, right? Nice and quick. Because Albert's, Albert is, don't have shields. And so it'd be really funny just to sit up here with my peasant bowmen and shoot them all to death. Death could be funny. Alright, come on, boys. Back to the sky. Yep, at speed. Ugh, I don't think we're going to reach them. I'll just leave them. This should be good, though. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, lucky you guys moved. Very lucky. Very lucky indeed. <laughs> yes, me lord. Love it. Alright, charge in then. Alright, let's get our spearmen down here. Getting bogged down. They're going to get shot to bits, so, you know, it's all good. And, oh yeah, these halberdiers are really upset. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and charge them. Nice. Hooray! Good job taking the ground, guys. Good job. So that went well. We've just taken Marienburg. Um, perhaps the, uh, I mean, probably not the, but certainly one of the most uh, income generating cities in the game. So pretty good for our first turn, isn't it? So that went well. Uh, and Knights of the Realm didn't really do anything. I mean, they did get some kills, apparently, but I think that was more the, the kills they got given as a reward for having defeated the enemy. Um, guess the thing, if it cancels out, like if it just sort of goes, oh, they're all dead. Even when we didn't kill the whole army, but it's a siege battle, so they have nowhere to retreat to. It just goes, yeah, they're all dead, and it just gives the kills to people. Which is nice. It's, um, I mean, it can be a bit annoying if you actually want to know how you guys did in the battle. But it's also great because it means you get experience for the kills that you didn't get, just because you could have if you'd stayed to the battle and chased everyone down in a boring way. So it means you can actually be a bit more expeditious. You can just leave and you know that you'll get some experience for you guys. So, you know, good little quality of life thing. And also, it's a good reason why uh, I keep telling people I don't want to chase people down because it's boring. <laughs> you don't have to. So, uh, right, let's go with... I mean, I do kind of want to sack it, but I think we're best just to take it. Um, oh, the extra money would be great. It's already chivalrous, but I mean... We've got to root out all of these, these silly merchant classes. They're not nobility. It's a nightmare. How true. The lady wills it. That was the stupidest thing I could have done. I guess we're attacking it the next turn as well. Well, I feel very silly. Um, <laughs> bloody marvellous. I was thinking of Sack and Occupy. I told you guys, still not quite with it. Uh, that'll do. And for Mary of Setus... Let's go with the Wind Blast. Excellent. Alright, well we'll take Marienburg in a minute then. Not bad for turn two, I guess. Research, economic investment, decrees. I think we've got to go decrees of Britonia. I really want to get a Green Tide decree as soon as I can. Because that's going to be very beneficial very shortly. So we have no chivalry now. <laughs> Classic. Oh, we are rolling in money though, so that's pretty good. And we can get, I think, Peasant's Day. We'll do Peasant's Day, get extra growth. Okay, I do want to this. I don't want Quran to grow big and strong, so let's move on. Green skinned and unpleasant land. So this is uh, this is the event I was talking about. So basically for the next 20 turns we have a green skin incursion. And so control is down for all of our provinces. This is something I actually really love as well. It's not public order, it's control which I think makes more sense um, generally in the game because, I mean, you guys have noticed that a lot of the time, you know, if, you're, if you're, uh, your territory has bad public order but it has high chaos corruption, then it's chaos stuff that turns up when there's a rebellion, right? It's thematic. It's, it's, it's control of your territory that's failing. It's not just about keeping the population happy because otherwise you have this weird thing where, oh, my population's really unhappy and now they've just all turned into... You know, they've all turned into beastmen or something. Like, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So, anyway. So, I like that, anyway. It's uh, specifically for these guys, because there are no uh, rebellions. Um, like, Bretonian rebellions. The peasants never rebel. They are 
permanently crushed underfoot. Nope, the things that attack are green skin, so we're gonna get green skin rebellions. So, uh, your people live in fear for evil stalks, fair Bretonia. The green skins that infest the mountains and forests harass and raid the surrounding villages with ever greater violence. Now they mass in the hills, their people fear a greater incursion. Control is decreasing across the land as a result. Hold out, if you think the kingdom robust enough, in the hope that they tire and skulk back to their hideouts, or lead a force to destroy their settlements, end their attacks and wipe them out for good. So basically, if you destroy a greenskin settlement, the event is over. So, Grangsint, we can attack this straight away, and we don't need to worry about that event. But I actually like the, the control going down, because you can farm a huge amount of chivalry, and experience, and money, just everything. There's just so much you can get out of having, you know, rebellions every uh, couple of turns. It's pretty great. But first, we better take, uh, better take Marienburg. And annoyingly... <laughs> <laughs> Annoyingly, we're going to fight it again. I don't trust auto resolve with the green skins just there. So let's let's attack Marienburg again. Sounds great. Okay, so this is definitely the first time we're attacking this place. Uh huh. All right, you guys, let's set you up on either side. Put you in the middle. You guys over here, and uh, I'll just group these guys. Charge straight in. You lot, over here. You run in. Tell you what, you start climbing the walls. I'll run you that way. And you should get in here too. We do have Wind Blast now, so I can wipe out anything remaining on the ground, which is pretty great. Big fan of that. And yeah, charges these crossbowmen. Excellent. Nice and easy. So, uh, I guess we'll go for their general. That'll be a giggle. And they don't have any halberds or anything this time. Because, uh, well, we lowered the the tier of Marienburg in the last battle. So, you know, a bit of a pity for poor old Marienburg. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, alright, let's go for these swordsmen. They're going to upset our peasants the most, I think. Okay, good. Uh, guys, you missed. <laughs> what are you doing down there? You're supposed to be attacking the walls. Alright, well, never mind. I guess they missed. Definitely seems like they missed. Okay, so that went really well. Let's get over here and we'll, uh, we'll attack these swordsmen in the rear next, I think. Maybe these ones. What happened to... What? Why didn't you go up there? That's weird. Alright. Let's recharge these spearmen. Not sure charge defense works when uh, they charge you in the back. So there they go. Lovely. Very dead. Very dead indeed. Dead like disco. Alright, come on boys. Up in the sky again. Come on, take the skies, guys. Take the skies. That's why they're called the Sky Guys. No one calls them that. People should, but no one calls them that. Uh, nope. Uh, or... I, mm. I want to breath attack these guys. Go, get them. You're not going to touch them, are you? Well, we knocked two of them over, so that's good enough. That is good enough. I pick us as knights. Up you get. I can't wait until we get Beaky. I do like Beaky. Uh, Alright, Swordsman again. Actually, no, these Spearmen next. A wonderful charge. Fantastic. Oh, oh, oh. Huh. The planet needs them, I guess. And that's a victory. So, how did you lot do? Oh, only 70 kills each. Oh, not huge. Okay, so. Now we're going to occupy it. The, lady. the Kingdom of Bretonia. So, um, this is part of a mod. So, uh, I do have the uh, Legendary Lore mod 
running. So anytime we recruit something, we're going to get a little bit of bit of fluff, which is great. Um, I think this is really fun. It's a really good mod. Uh, a lot of the time I leave it off because it's a bit text heavy. But I thought this time actually is quite nice because you know I don't I don't feel like uh, you know conjuring my encyclopedic knowledge of Warhammer. It's nice just to have the little summaries of each unit. Um, and there's things that I forget, you know, so it's just nice and it's good to have these mods running. I think it's, uh, I think it's great because it injects something into Total War Warhammer that I think is missing from it in a lot of respects. There's a lot of sort of fluff that is missing. There's a lot of context for the units that I think is missing, which I think is really nice to have, you know. I like to know why everything is how it is and where it fits into the, you know, the dynamic of the, of the environment they're in. You know, I like all that stuff. So, but don't, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Mon dieu. Uh, Bretonian lords are powerful nobles whose deeds are recounted throughout the land, even by mighty earls, barons, and dukes themselves. Proud and powerful warriors all. Bretonian lords are excellent warrior generals. Most of the lords of Bretonia were dukes of noble stock, such as Duke Beaumont Bisslayer of Baston and Theodoric of Brion. They claim, uh, they claim a shared ancestry with the first Bretonian king, Giles Rebeton. You know what? I'm already bored of the, the French voice. I know. I know. We just started it. But no, I'm, find, I'm finding it work. I'm finding it a lot of work. So, and we got more text to read than we otherwise would. So you know what? It's in the bin. It's gone now. We can't have nice things. Nope, not allowed. Uh, so... Uh, Jaël Le Breton, and I am going to say the names in a French way, because that's how they're, you know, it's a name, so anyway. Uh, and many purport that their founders fought alongside him in his many battles. Lords are important and powerful figures, both in the military and political world of Bretonia. Often trading sword and shield for cup and words in the halls of power to play the game and advance their cause. Wonderful. So, Champion of the lady. Lou and Leoncoeur. That's, uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, hang on, actually. Guardians of the Lady make Pegasus Knights better. And we are relying on them a fair bit. But that's only because of the siege battles. We won't be doing that for a while. So no, let's go Glorfinial's progeny. Let's get our Knights of the Realm uh, better. I think that's the smart move for now. Um, also, let's go with Wind Blast some more. I will be spamming that most of the time. It's great just for taking out a big block of infantry. Um, so I will be taking advantage of that. Lady. And now, we should probably go ahead and recruit something. Probably. Uh, oh, it's all global, because Marienburg doesn't have anything here. Uh, it doesn't have anything at all. Seven turns until we can upgrade this. Ah, oh, sacking it was a mistake. Because, <laughs> yeah, I've only got global recruitment. Well, that sucks. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to get a prophetess over here. Because I do want some prophetesses running about. Because they're great, they're good. Um, although, get some more lords might be nice. Although we will actually have all the the sort of Bretonian lords filled when we start confederating, because we'll have just a bunch of dukes spare. So I think I think we do want to go with the prophetesses. Um, let's see, heavens, beasts, or life. I really do like lore of life. That's a fun one. Let's go with uncompromising. Because just a little a little less likely to be wounded, I think, is better than extra leadership. Because they don't need good leadership. So, uh, uh, Ambre Dubois. Devotee of the lady. My steps are Devoted of the goddess. I, I really like this mod. It's very fun. So, sometimes young children within Bretonia are seen to have strange and mystical powers. They might be born with eyes of different colours. Milk may sour in their presence. Or they may be able to predict events before they occur. Other children claim to see ghostly apparitions walking about, or are heard talking to beings they, uh, that others cannot see. As superstitious people as a whole, whether noble or lowborn, the Bretonians will, uh, will generally be fearful of such gifted children, and go out of their way to avoid them whenever possible, invoking the protection of the Lady of the Lake and Shalia. Shalia being the, uh, uh, I mean, I say empire, but really human um, sort of god of, of health um, and protection and, and such things. So, um, and sworn enemy of Nurgle, by the way, Shalia. Because, you know, disease versus health. Shalian priestesses tend to be sort of the, the local nurses and things. Um, and anyone in the sort of medical profession tends to worship Shalia. Anyway, often, especially within Quinelde, such children uh, by the Fey inhabitants 
sorry, such children are perceived, I don't know how I skipped that, such children are perceived as having been touched by the fae inhabitants of the forest, or even replaced with a changeling. However, for every child who shows signs of such uh, mystical powers, there are other gifted children that never display any outward sign of their strange otherworldly talents. Some of these children are sent to the Empire, if they come from particularly wealthy families, to learn the arts of magic, but this is a rare occurrence. Before they reach puberty, almost all children with these strange talents will be visited by the Fae Enchantress. She takes them with her to the other world, and they are mourned by their parents as if they were no longer living. Nevertheless, it is a great honour to be taken by the Enchantress, and it is believed that they go to a better place, where their powers are used to serve the Blessed Lady of the Lake herself. While nothing is ever seen of the boy children again, sometimes the girl children will return to Bretonia years later as damsels and prophetesses. Um, so the boy children, um, I'm pretty sure, get they end up in a part of Athaloran that has uh, Athaloran has a weird uh, time doesn't quite function properly. So the boys tend to remain as boys and are servants to um, Glade Lords. Essentially, it's all a bit twisted and messed up, and uh, the women become damsels. So. Uh, sometimes the girl will return to Bretonia years later as damsels and prophetesses. Obviously not all of them do, because um, Athel Lauren isn't exactly uh, the nicest of places. And sometimes, because it's pre-puberty, uh, sometimes it's just the children are mutants or something. It's not always that they're actually uh, magically gifted. But the reason why there's that sort of, oh, some return, some don't, that's why the noblemen tend to just send their magic kids to the Empire to train as a wizard, because that tends to protect them from the horrible reality that everyone sort of ignores in Bretonia. It's it's pretty messed up, but, you know, that's Warhammer. So, damsels and prophetesses are powerful individuals, for in their years away from Bretonia, their innate abilities have been honed and tempered. Their magic is more oriented around nature than that of most other human wizards, for they are taught by the handmaidens of the Lady. Riding into battle, the damsels and prophetesses use their powers to lend protection to the noble warriors of Bretonia, warding away the foul magic excuse me, the foul magic of their enemies, as well as casting down the foe with their own powerful spells. They are able to mystically encourage the landscape to fight the enemies of Bretonia, and the trees themselves lash at their foe. Flocks of birds descend on the enemy at their will, and some can even draw lightning from the heavens to strike down in devastating arcs. When not in battle, they fulfil such roles as advisors to the dukes and king, where their magical abilities and visions may aid their lord. They use the powers to scry into the future, to protect the sacred glades favoured by the lady, uh, to protect the, uh, to detect, rather, the truth in the hearts of men, and to lend the lady's healing when needed. As priestesses of the lady, they also maintain her shrines and lead devotions and prayers, in a similar way to the enchantress herself. These powerful individuals exist somewhat outside the usual hierarchy of Bretonia, and may come and go throughout the realms as they please, for none would dare to cross one so favoured by the lady herself. So, uh, the whole concept of the lady is that it, it's false. It's a, it's an elaborate ruse uh, used to sort of keep uh, Bretonia doing, um, basically protecting Athaloran from outside forces, um, essentially, which is messed up. It's pretty messed up. But it is super interesting that the main figureheads of their religion are wizards, essentially, right? They're spellcasters, which is really interesting because all the other religions of the old world, although they have battle prayers and things, it's magic through the means of their devotion to a god that gives them the spells, right? That sort of does the spells on their behalf, using, using their priest as a conduit for that magic, right? Whereas wizards and, you know, the the spellcaster Bretonia, you know, the, the prophetesses and damsels, they are casting spells because there isn't a god that they're channeling because it's a ruse. And so their spellcasters aren't using holy might, they're just wizards, right? They're wizards but also preaching. So it's, it's interesting that that disconnect, um, you know, that sort of, uh, that, that gap between uh, sort of god and the magic that is occurring um, doesn't exist. There's there's not that middle ground where it's, uh, you know, there's not the middleman that is the god that is channeling that on your behalf. So it's a lot more dangerous. But, uh, of course, they're all trained by elves and are very capable and terrifying. So, you know, damsels are interesting in that regard. It's an interesting divergence from the usual um, the usual way that religion plays out in, uh, in the old world. But it's a bit of a clue that 
maybe there isn't a god there in the you know to begin with um i believe people of the empire well wizards of the empire kind of recognize that there's something something a bit odd there so pretty cool pretty cool anyway uh, we've been talking about this for ages so let's let's crack on that is the problem with this mod i get really carried away uh talking sort of i guess warhammer theory is that a thing sure why not anyway uh you should probably get some troops uh we why you call me a hapless fool <laughs> how dare you that's so rude uh anyway we can get a few more peasants so I'm going to get a few more peasants. We will definitely need to get our cavalry building built soon, though, so we can start getting some things like Knights of the Realm. And before anyone tells me, you did it already, Janet, I'm going to get the Troth of Protection. So uh, let's see. Research five technologies. Be in a region of five buildings. Complete in construction or rank five times. Rank five times we can do very quickly, I think. So we'll do that. And that will give us cheaper upkeep for Knights Errant, Knights of the Realm, and Pegasus Knights, which is brilliant. So we'll do that. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, should the Knights of Bretonia answer the call of battle, their preservation and empowerment shall be my duty, so they may ward away all that is foul and evil to strike down the foes of this great land of chivalry, my obligation to the lady realised. Wonderful. So, there we go. Here's uh, André Dubois. I wish her luck. Should be cool. Uh, so, yeah. Bad, bad public order. We will be farming orcs in a couple of different places. And we might have to be a bit careful, because it can get a little bit tense. So, Peasant Bowman. So this will happen every time we recruit something. So, you know, we'll have it happen less as we go through the game. But for now, we'll have it quite often. So, when the call of war comes, every peasant able to fight must serve in the armies of Bretonia. A willingness reinforced by the promised bounty of a copper coin for any who survive the campaign. A few are pressed into service alongside the standing companies of men at arms, bulking out the ranks thinned by casualties or sickness. However, most are employed as levies of longbowmen who are expected to engage enemies unworthy of a knight's attention. Though the tenets of the chivalric honour forbid knights to use any kind of missile weapon, there is, of course, no such restriction on the peasants who are not expected to know better. Uh, though the uh, wage of a peasant archer could be judged pitiful by most standards, to the commoners of Bretonia it is a princely wage indeed. Most parents will encourage their offspring to practice with a bow so they might increase their family's earnings. Unlike men-at-arms, peasant bowmen are not equipped with the armories of the castle and turn up to battle in all manner of garb. Likewise, their long bows will often be their own possessions, handed down from father to son. Though it is a rich family that can afford more than a single bow, and according, uh, accordingly can be of variable quality. To make their numbers count, these longbowmen congregate into huddled units on the battlefield, directing volley after volley into the enemy. Like men-at-arms, peasant bowmen are not very reliable if left to their own devices, but under the stern gaze of a knight can inspire, <laughs> can aspire to adequate, uh, though not exceptional, deeds. Pretty great. So you can see there's a, a much greater sort of wealth disparity in Bretonia than in the Empire that has sort of a growing middle class and sort of growing sort of, uh, you know, merchant classes. So, very different dynamic. You know, feudalism as opposed to um, sort of uh, still fairly feudal but with, I guess, uh, mercantilism, you know, some capitalist values allowing for um, sort of personal uh, uh, the growth of your of your wealth, I suppose. Bit different, bit different system. So, uh, Luan Leong, uh, I guess you could just sit there like a, like a not berg. Possible. Um, not possible. It's very possible. I've seen you sit there like a berg before. All right, you're gonna stand there, and uh, you're going to raid. See it done. So, the thing with this seems mental. Obviously, I'm raiding my own territory, and that will actually you lower my chivalry. Done. But, that's going to upset everyone. Okay, that's going to upset here. It's going to upset the locals. So, from raiding, uh, only actually minus three. But, it contributes. And that's what matters. So, if we can get rebels... Uh, rebels? Rebellions? There we go. If we can get rebellions to occur more often, then we'll be able to fight them more. And the more battles we do, the more um, uh, uh, chivalry we actually get. So, it actually makes us a profit, if we can do that as quickly as possible. Because we only have 20 turns before that event you know, sort of wanes, and uh, once that's gone, we won't be able to keep triggering them anymore. 
uh, things will settle down, and it would just be a it would take forever to just sit here and get rebellions to happen more and more. So I will be trying to get as many rebellions as I can while I have the chance. What is your behest? What is my behest? My behest is to I, know, I guess a man at arms. I guess <laughs> I've only got one slot left for uh, for my peasant economy. So we'll see. It's why taking this stuff will be good, but I don't want to upset the um, the Norskins just yet. Not really. Hmm. Ah, yeah, indeed. All right, moving on. Okay, so oh my god, there's raiding in the wasteland, really. Oh, also, um, thematically, by the way, I consider raiding um, when I'm doing it here with regards to Bretonia. Because the rebellions are greenskin attacking, right? It's the greenskins attacking. I don't consider raiding actually raiding our territory, but just rooting out greenskins. Okay, so when I'm raiding, I'm actually, you know, I've actually got uh, Lu and Leonk uh, just sort of heading into the forests and flushing out tribes of greenskins and stuff. That's how I see that. It's him hunting down uh, these greenskins, which is why you get, you know, these rebellions to happen more often. Because the greenskins are having to meet him in the field. So that's that's how I see it. That's my uh, head cannon for the sort of this situation. So it shouldn't really be lowering chivalry, but arguably you could say that the chivalry we're losing is nobles at his court being like, oh, what is he doing running around like cleaning up after peasants, you know, running around farmland killing greenskins. It's just silly, you know. It's a peasant's job to look after their own bloody farms. Um, so it's just people spreading nonsense, um, just sort of spreading slander at court at home, which is lowering uh, Leon Kerr's sort of chivalry. But then he wins a great battle, kills a billion greenskins, throws a bunch of heads down on the, you know, on the table in court, and goes, killed them. And everyone goes, ooh, oh yes. Yes, wonderful. Very good. Very good. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my, that's my headcanon for that. So anyway, decrees of Bretonia by the king's word and the eternal grace of the, the lady is Bretonia governed for the good of its people. <laughs> yeah, sure it is. So, Menace arms. Each midsummer, commoners flock to their lord's castle to present their sons in the hope that they are trained as men at arms. For a peasant to have a son accepted into the ranks of a knight's household is a great honour. Some young peasants will have been guided towards this goal through their entire life, encouraged to stand up straighter and taller than the usual peasant, slouch, to better improve their chances of selection. All morning and afternoon, the knight inspects the candidates. By dusk, the luckiest and strongest are selected and are taken back to the castle where they are given basic training and outfitted in the livery of their lord. The inductee is given an extravagant bounty for joining, though this uh, all too often vanishes as the new recruits are expected to pay for their new uniform, equipment and even make a contribution to the temples of Shalia. They are given room, a rough straw mattress in a barn, and a board, thin gruel and stew, and earn a wage for their faithful service. On paper, their wage is quite generous, far exceeding anything a peasant could otherwise legally earn, but what the militiamen actually receive is but a mere fraction of this total, if indeed they receive anything at all. Every conceivable expense is deducted from this salary, from their food and accommodation, through to each and every equipment loss and breakage. Some miserly lords will even levy a charge for any funeral expenses incurred. While not terribly strong or skillful, men at arms provide the knight with a body of troops with which he can safeguard his domain. When the knight is summoned away to war, he will take as many of these troops with him, but will always leave enough behind to safeguard his castle, and if needs be, shelter the local villagers until he returns. In more peaceful times, the men at arms perform routine tasks, watching the borders of the domain and patrolling the knight's lands. Very cool to see. Um, I do kind of want to raid this place, but I'm, I'm wondering if that would... Let's see. Hang on. Greenskin incursions. Uh, occupy or raise. Okay, so I could sack it. I could sack this place. I could I could do that. So yeah, two more turns, and that's going to rebel. Uh, if we aren't raiding it, for one turn, it's not going to rebel. Yeah, we'll be on minus 99, I think. Because we're on minus three from that, right? Uh, provincial instability is actually dropping. So yeah, we do need to keep raiding it. So yeah, although it doesn't seem much, we are we are getting a, a rebellion a turn early. So that has helped. It has helped. Uh, clay pit. Let's get a clay pit and let's get some stables built. Wonderful. Wonderful. And we spent... Um... Oh, I can't get a clothier, can I? Not until I get... Uh... 
this ruddy thing, the cellar. Ooh, do I do that now so I can up my income here? Ooh, I'm very tempted. I am very tempted to get that done. Get that out of the way. Uh, I would also quite like a tap room built, honestly. There's a few things I want here. Karan is, uh... There's a lot I need. There's a lot I need to get. That would be really nice to get something like a, a grail shrine here, so I can start getting damsels nice and early. Smithies are good too. There's just a lot of good buildings. I always find Bretonia a difficult one to build for. There, there seems to be actual choices you have to make. Which is quite rare, I must say. Uh, let's go to the clay pit, just because... I hate not having certain trade goods built. And I uh, will build up the barracks as well. I see you. Okay, that'll have to do. Uh, so, speaking of trade goods. The laws of I don't think this is going to work. I never Oops. Fail. Well, I didn't mean to click yes on that. Oh, well, that's great. That's wonderful. Thanks. Um, Do you know who? The laws of Hello, Bordelow. Trade with me. I will not. Oh. Artois. Trade with me. No, he doesn't want to. Not aggression Lord packs to start, though. Let them speak. Oh, Morgiana. Come on. To fair I'm your king, for God's sake. Ask a peasant. Ugh. Ask a peasant to trade? Trade what? Oh, Alberic. What a douche. Alright, anyway, so. Uh, being king isn't a lot of help, apparently. So that's fine. Maybe when I have some clay pots, they'll... Uh, They'll think I'm cool. So, let's... Oh, do you want to attack them? I need to sit there and raid. I really do. Uh, Ombre Dubois. Though, I think I might send her up this way. Oh, I'm in a bit of a bind here. No, I'm not. I'll, I'll just run. So, Curon is also going to be rebelling fairly shortly. So, uh, Ombre Dubois. I'm actually going to give uh, Lewin all of her troops. I'm just going to have her stand near. Right, I'm going to have them stand together. They can both raid. And, uh, oh, that's going to upset the... Hmm. Hang on. Okay, good. So, uh, I'm going to have her transfer the troops over to him. Uh, can I do that now? Oh, I actually can. Cool. She's not going to raid this turn, but that's fine. Uh, so, he's got a better army now. And she can raid with him, which will affect public order more. And it means she can keep joining his reinforcements whenever we do get rebellion. So, they'll both get experience. So, we can farm plenty of experience, get her nice and high level. So, that's the plan. Okay, so, Marienburg's being raided. Funny that. And we will have an incursion in a second. Perfect. Do I need to keep... I assent to yes, I do. Well, good. Alright, keep doing that then. A king uh, or, what might be interesting, is if... I, have seen I ambush with him. And I raid with her. Because Marienburg has a crappy garrison. And her on her own... A Grok Cracktooth might come and try and attack. So we'll see if we can bait that attack in here. In fact, what I could do... I shall do what I is... Ooh, 70% chance. Oh, good. These are actual trees. You know, real ones. They're not just pretending. Uh, and then Take she can stand here. Taking my leave downtown. Walking fast. Uh, right, so yeah. We'll leave that. And that should be a very good target. We have a good chance to ambush. So that's hilarious. We'll see if this goes to plan. Because basing out this attack early is going to be great. That's going to be really, really useful. Because it means he won't hop over here and attack Long Wheel when he gets the chance. Which um, can only be a good thing for us. It can only be a good thing. We also need to watch out for Magnus Herman over here. You know, we are going to have Marienburg try and come back to Marienburg. It's going to be a right pain. Oh, and 15 more turns. Why is growth so bad? Because of events. Oh, and raiding armies. Oh, yeah. Okay, that will do it. But, uh, yeah, so this actually affects... I don't know what event is causing that, actually. It says events, but it doesn't tell me what the event is. No idea. Oh, is it down here? The inhabitants of this region are outraged. Yeah, growth goes down because he's unhappy. So it will take a long time to cheer that up. That's fine. Ambush failed, but we did bait in the attack, so this is still absolutely fine. Okay, good. Boopity boop. So we will have reinforcements coming. Our uh, um, prophetess will be coming in at some point. Which is fine, you know, no rush. 
Knights of the Realm. So, yeah, I can Vanguard. So, tell you what, I'm going to Vanguard over here. I have to fly in. That should be fun. Uh, so, I have a couple of archers. <laughs> Did I go overboard on archers? Nah, I can hold them. We're good. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Cool. Alright, that'll do. Kinda. Sort of. Alright. Alright, Louis. In you get, mate. Uh, sorry, your what is? And... Ooh, ooh, he got... Just, that's, that's what's left of it. Oh, there, look, he's got some legs. There's still some legs. <laughs> brutal. Absolutely brutal. Alright, let's keep moving up. Uh, you guys are in range, right? Hell yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah, nice. Up the realm. And, uh, oh, I suppose the our prophetess can run in too. Come on, girl. Here you get. It is her will. And, yeah, I'll be able to use Wind Blast eventually. Not yet, but, you yeah, know, eventually. Yeah, I do want to get on top of this. Ow. Rude much. Okay, those old boys disintegrated, which is very rude of them. Very rude of them indeed. Hmm. Eh, that should do it. Okay. Let's get you in over here. Okay, wonderful. Alright, you get in the sky again. Okay, good stuff. Yeah, Lewin's having a fun time. I'm not sure a lot what those trebuchets are doing, but I'm also uh, not likely to bother changing it. So you guys, you know what? You stay on them. You are absolutely decimating those orc boys. That's wonderful. Okay. Yeah, let's get over here, shall we? Well, I don't like how this guy is beating us. Let's use one of those, and one of these. I do love spellcasting, must say. Alright, charge back that way. They've been shot in the rear, so we'll run off. Perfect. Uh, come on, mate. Mess them up. Okay, nice little rear charge over here. So we are getting a bit bogged down, but I think we'll probably be fine. Yeah, they're getting very upset. Everyone's getting very upset. That's a win. That's a win. Okay. So, a Grot Crack Tooth getting wrecked. And uh, so is everyone. I think we're probably good. Um, I was going to say zero left, which is kind of annoying. I do hate that that's the case. I want to see how many bodies there actually are remaining. Because I do want to know how many I'm going to have to fight a second time if I have to. I guess we'll just end it. Alright. Job well done. Happy with that. We took out their artillery, which is the thing that, that is completely irreplaceable to. So, uh, yeah, let's go. Job well done. Okay, so we did get a boatman. So, extra income from trade faction-wide. I mean, that's pretty great. Uh, Leoness got destroyed by Moussillon. Bloody Red Duke. Ugh, rubbish. And uh, also, it turns out that we weren't rooting out green skins. It was actually uh, James Gorser here. Gauser? Gorser? Anyways, James here. But, uh, no. that he's been prowling in the woods. Yeah, he might be a Hiramolt or something. I have to explain what Hiramolt is now, don't I? So, Hiramolt is kind of like uh, Robin Hood. So, it's the Bretonian. The Hiramolts are the, are the Merry Men. Um, or, you know, the equivalent. You know, like Rapalce's Joan of Arc, that kind of thing. There's uh, the Hiramolts as well. So, uh, peasants who, who want things like what is your behest? King money and food. You know, just silly peasant stuff. Silly peasants. If they wanted if they wanted money and food, they wouldn't have been peasants. That's all I'm saying. So, let's go with more uh, Glorfinial's uh, progeny. And we also have another level 4, Mary Setrus. 
Let's go with... I guess another Wind Blast. It's just too good. Love a good Wind Blast. And for you... Uh, so I think we might have to upgrade her... Um, her spellcasting abilities. But we also kind of need to upgrade her army abilities. I hate this about spellcasters. Because like spellcasters are kind of rubbish if you don't put a bunch of points into them. Whereas like Lee and Kerr can still swing a sword pretty damn well, even at his most basic. You know what I mean? So uh, let's go with the route. Mm, we are not going to be moving much, are we? Although possibly from like Marienburg to Cologne, so we do need to make sure we do have movement spare for you when we are the on the march, I guess. So yeah, Ugrok got very, very hurt there. How's Grung Zint looking? You know, it's actually looking a little tough. So I think we will keep toying with them for a bit. Uh, you should probably stop being in King March starts. Why are you in March starts? Yeah, I must have misclicked that. Um, I didn't move Marie Setrus nearby, so I'm actually going to retreat. I have seen your heart. Which I'm pretty sure, um, just for some weird nonsense, My if ready. you decide to attack and then you hit retreat, you actually lose the blessing of the lady. Not for Lewin, because that's tied to him forever. But uh, you can actually earn the blessing of the lady for your armies if you just win a bunch. But I'm pretty sure that counts as a retreat, and if you retreat, that's not chivalrous, and so you lose the blessing of the lady. Also, what's going on there? Oh, it's a big spider. I thought this was the front of it, and was very confused. But yeah, okay, anyway. Big spider. Big spider, guys. And big, uh, big Emile von Corden. Well, it is. I, I can see you. So, here we go. We're going to have to fight it, just because uh, I don't trust Auto Resolve not to do more damage than it should be. So, let's go attack James. Okay, so. Boop. And... Uh, just get you all in the back, eh? And uh, get a nice wide front line. Uh, Leonka, I think I might actually keep... Um, keep out of the fight to an extent. I, I don't like the damage he's taken. But... Oh. I say, but we can lure him in with the trebuchets and just shoot everything to bits. But I guess we can't do that. <laughs> Uh, so Pistoliers are going to be no good. We don't have to worry about them at all. They are not going to do well. Alright, you move forwards. And yeah, we've got plenty of other troops that can um, rear charge once they're engaged. So our peasants don't have to hold out for very long, really. Oh, and I suppose we could actually get, uh, get our prophetess over here and get some healing into Leon Kerr with her spells. That would be a nice... A nice shortcut. So, nearly there. Nearly there. Almost there. As I say, I love the, love the purple uniforms. Are they from Ostermark? Are you guys from Ostermark? What are you guys doing here? It's very strange. Anyway. Well. Oh, here we go. Ooh. Uh. Ooh. I think I think they're gonna feel that for a while. All right, come on, girl. You really you really need a unicorn, don't you? You really do. <laughs> Poor girl. <laughs> One of the most powerful and important people in Bretonia. No one's given her a horse, and for some reason they're calling her an army. In her service. Yeah, an army in in her service, but an army, you know. It's very silly. All right, more rocks coming in, which, uh, you know. Ooh, wow. That guy just got punted right off his horse. Brutal. Wonderful. So, yeah, these guys are definitely, um, definitely suffering here. I do enjoy artillery in this game. I also enjoy that the AI just sort of sit and take it. <laughs> I mean, there's a limit, but, uh, you know, they are coming in. They are doing something, but they're sort of damned if they do, damned if they don't, so. It's just not a good, not a good day for them. Not a good day for them at all. Okay. Next volley, please. I'm enjoying the fireworks. And. Oh, yep, that did it. That, that did it. 
pretty good. <laughs> uh, I enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, peasant archers. You guys will absolutely slaughter the pistoliers. They're just... There's nothing. We outrange them, and they have no protection from missiles. They melt under arrow fire. They absolutely melt. See? Look at the melting. Just... Yeah, just melting to nothing. We're making a, a jus of horse. A uh, jus à la cheval. Okay, come on, you. Oh, yep. Yep, that's going well. Yeah, these guys have pincushions now. Oh, speaking of pincushions. We should start helping out Lewin, shouldn't we? Yes, we should. Yes, we should. Oh, and they have a lord. Who knew? Alright, you guys can stop. And... So yeah, trebuchets will stop them going and everyone else can start moving in. It's all good. And... <laughs> it's just a bad day. It's a very bad day for them. Alright, let's do that. And uh, all of our archers shoot their lord. I don't think he's going to last. Just a hunch. Just a hunch. Oh yeah, he's... Mm. Yeah, he's having a bad day. I mean, he's taking it like a champ. I give him that much. He is taking it like a champ. Just, <laughs> just casually running around with an arrow in his neck. So there we go. That's one rebellion down. So that is one thing with sort of farming rebellions. Um, you can't really trust auto resolve not to up your casualties too much, and so you often have to fight these battles. I can fast forward, you know, later ones. We don't have to play through them all in such excruciating depth like this. But uh, it's just it's fun watching our trebuchets put in the work, you know. Okay, so things are looking good here, you know, we've, we've wrecked these guys, we are going to offer redemption. So this is actually pretty great, because when we're fighting greenskins, we don't have the choice of offer redemption, right? You can only do that with human armies. So the fact that we're getting human armies cropping up in Marienburg is actually refueling Lewin's army to fight orcs in, uh, in Kiron. I am the blood of Sheen. So it's pretty cool. It's, it's interesting, I'm for sure. For the lady. And he's alive, which is... It is unworkable, you're right. So, glittering scales for, for Leonka, that's fine. Yeah, little helps. Uh, who told you? Anyway, let's do that. We'll trespass to the Empire, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. Carl will forgive me, I'm sure. Although we already made things incredibly tense by taking Marienburg, so... You know. My journey begins. It's a little bit tense. Uh, also, I'm going to have to go to March stance so I can get over here now. But she should get reinforcing going on here. Uh, oh, actually, that's a good point. I don't want to be in Marienburg, do I? No, I don't. Can you imagine? Let's go to the rebellion in like a turn. Um, Kiron is going to rebel in a couple of turns, so I do actually need to go and babysit that. So I think what I'm going to have to do is uh, actually have uh, André Dubois hang out in Marienburg. So we'll have an extra couple turns respite. She can loiter there and Leon Kirk can come over here and uh, fight whatever rebellion turns up in Coron. Which will deny Dubois the, uh, the experience. But, yeah, I just, I can't really leave Marienburg alone with Ugrot Cracktooth here. Although Mil von Corden might be coming in next turn too. So, I might be in a bit of a bind. But, Kiron does have a pretty good garrison, so I don't have to worry too, too much. I'm sure I'll live. So, Dawnstone as well. 15% physical resist. That's really nice, actually. That's really good to have. Um, you know, especially early days where a bunch of the enemies we'll be fighting won't have, like, a bunch of crazy magic items giving them magic damage on their attacks. So we will be able to see that, you know, 15% uh, physical resist sort of taking effect. So a precious stone glows at the break of every dawn. Its bearer is said to be protected by an invisible field. King of Fields? That sounds like peasants' work. I'm not sure I want to use this. I think Lewin is above fields. Ugh. So, Glorfinial's progeny and uh, Root Marcher, so we can actually get <laughs> back home in a hurry. And let's upgrade Marie Cetrus. 
Uh, Roiling Skies, maybe? Just, we're not going to be fighting a lot of flying units for quite some time. I can't really think of any flying units. Maybe Harpies will be fighting at some point. You know, maybe Harpies, if uh, if the Dark Elves turn up. So let's get Cursed the Midnight Wind. It's a lovely debuff. Big fan of it. And Dubois. Okay, Dubois. Let's get you Inspiring Presence. And then we'll start getting, uh, I guess, Lowborn Militia? Or we could do wor Worshippers of the Grail, actually. We could go with, like, a Grail Knight. Uh, not Grail Knight, like a Grail themed army. You know, we sort of battle pilgrims and things. That could be quite fun. So yeah, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to do something like that. Be quite cool. It does help, uh, actually it does help foot squires as well, which is pretty impressive. Foot squires are good. Champion of the lady. So yeah, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that for a, rather than going with um, lots Sorcerer. of knights. Although, you know, we are getting our way down through here, so we'll have that troth soon. Okay, ensure that the following building has been constructed an armory. The Bretonian warrior uh, uh, Agilulf is well known amongst the dukedom's knightly classes. Once a great grail knight, he successfully embarked on countless chivalrous quests to rid the world of its foulest monsters. Thousands were slain by his sword. Um, is this supposed to be like Beowulf, I'm assuming? Uh, so anyway, Thousands were slain by his sword. He was also famous for his glittering armour he wore, which possessed a magical sheen that would blind his enemies in combat, frequently giving him the upper hand. No one really knows what became of Adilath, or how he met his end. Needless to say, that he failed to return from his final knightly quest, and was assumed to have been killed. Neither he nor his uh, resplendent armour were ever seen again, until today. A piece of armour bearing Adilath's heraldry is brought before King Lewin, Recovered by a group of Grail Knights returning from a holy quest. The iconography proves beyond doubt that the armor belonged to a member of Agilov's household, but it does not possess the fabled radiance and is surprisingly brittle. Upon consulting with the Fae Enchantress, King Lewin discovers both that it is indeed Agilov's armor and that its sheen and durability are magically linked, its dullness and fragility an indication that its magical properties have long since waned. The only way to restore Agilov's armor is to buff and polish until its brilliance returns. Firstly, by, smelt it, uh, by melting it down and then reforging it, uh, such work is no job for a peasant smithy. Instead, this requires a master craftsman hand. So, um, we will get the armor of brilliance for it, which is nice. That's lovely. 10% ward save plus 30 armor. It's pretty great. Um, but we do need an armory first, which is a bit of a hassle. And here we go. So, this is superb. So, this is what I was hoping for, uh, you know, getting nice and early. Because we get double experience for uh, gain for units for fighting greenskins so double experience brilliant and extra two chivalry for every victory against them because you can see we are at 82 chivalry so the battles we have been doing are far outpacing the damage to the chivalry we've had from raiding our own territory so it is a great way to get ahead on the chivalry race against these guys so um, it's pretty good so I like that I like that a lot so Kron is going to rebel now of course it is jerks I don't like that I don't like that one bit. Ugh. Is there anything here that isn't a peasant? It's all peasants, isn't it? So, yeah, so by the way, this peasant economy. Right, this peasant economy. So, if we have, um... Uh, does it do it through, um... Is it just settlements, or does it... Does, I've forgotten. I can't remember if actually building farms changes that. I don't think it does. Hang on. No, it doesn't. It is affected by the peasant economy, though. So if you look up here, this peasant's economy, we get cheaper upkeep for peasant mobs and, you know, all sorts, and cheaper upkeep for non-knight units. So peasants are cheaper, as long as this is okay. As soon as we go over, peasants start costing us more, because our farms aren't being run properly, because all the farmers are in our army. Because that's how peasants work. So, um, it's pretty cool. So you stay under that limit. Um, but, if we have a look at André Dubois, if I pin... Nope. Pin you. Not pin you. There we go. This is like on down here. So uh, down here, if you can see, peasant economy. So this is a peasant unit whose men are no longer able to work their farms. So it's that icon that we're looking out for. So any unit that doesn't have that, we can recruit safely without going over this limit. Unfortunately, all of this counts as, uh, as a peasant unit. So we can't avoid it. I know. What a hassle, right? What a hassle. So now I'm thinking... Uh, no, I need to I need to get stuck in. I was going to say, now I'm thinking what I could do is just set up an ambush here and then move the rest of the way to the, you know, to actually fight the, uh, 
rebellion, but the rebellion could end up here, in which case I won't be able to reach it next turn. That would be really annoying. But it's fine. We can deal with that and then come back. And we will have a rebellion here, turn after next. So, um, it's going to be a busy few turns, especially if Emil von Corden decides to run over here. Luckily, he can't reach Marienberg in a single turn. So, there is that. But I can't necessarily reach it in a single turn, so... It's a bit iffy. Definitely a bit iffy. Um, let's see. Uh, Grey Mountain Watch. That'll give me even more chivalry against green skins. And it'll also give me extra weapon strength against green skins. It'll also really piss them off. So, that's good. Love that. Um, although, I think about it. Any of these other ones that would be good? Sewer Cleaning Decree. High Seas Decree. Secure Shores. Secure Shores is probably a good one to get out of the way, to be honest, because uh, it'll upset the Dark Elves, but they're going to declare a war on me anyway, so extra melee defense against them would be pretty nice. You know? Would be pretty good. Uh, I think I'll leave it. There's also these uh, diplomatic ones you can get for all the, the forces of order, which is pretty cool. It's a rather good one to have. Uh, okay, we'll just go with Grey Mountain Watch for now. Cool. We're also a little bit skint. We definitely need more battles to feed us. Um, okay, Marienberg, how many turns? Nine more turns before I can upgrade it. Ugh. We really need Marienberg built up. We really do. We're probably going to lose it. And and Dubois, probably. I just I just don't think we can hold off against uh, yeah, like Emile's run straight in. We're not going to be able to get back here in time. Unless we leave Mash Edbutt here being a jerk. Which uh, might be a bit tough because Kiron isn't looking its best either. Because, yeah, that's quite a scary army with a bunch of biggins and uh, trolls. Compare that to our garrison. We don't have a lot going for us. Although the peasant bowmen can easily kill all the trolls from a distance. Uh, the biggins are going to be a pain, though. Although I guess cycle charging. You know, we will get through them eventually. I just worry about what else he'll get here. See, I think Marion and both have to come back here so we can deal with the Mule Gordon. Not. That sucks a bit. Of the lady. Yeah, it definitely sucks. And uh, these guys are going to get feisty as well. You know, these two together could attack Marienburg and crush it. So I'm not really sure how we deal with this now. Um, I will not obey. do you want peace? <laughs> I refuse. Go on. He doesn't want peace. I don't know why. It's like I've taken his capital and haven't bothered to man it with any troops. Um, and that's going to rebel next turn too. Oh my god. Champion Bloody marvellous. Okay, how much movement? That's going to be a lot of our movement used up attacking this guy. A lot of it. The lion. Um, I mean, Marienburg isn't worth as much to me as Quran is. So there is that, but I think Quran can look after itself a little bit better. Um, I am the blood of oh, this is just, this is just silly. Oh, this has been so poorly timed. Alright, never mind, we're running over here. Um, he's in March starts. I'll ignore that. So, that's actually perfect. We can wipe him out this turn. Because I'll just attack him with, um, with Andre Dubois. <laughs> Easy. So yeah, uh, Kiran, we're going to have to just hope, is fine. I'm sure it's fine. Why wouldn't it be fine? But anyway, Emil can't go anywhere. So he's absolutely screwed. Uh, yeah, and his army sucks. So yeah, we can easily kill them all. Um, I mean, I say easily. We're going to have to fight it ourselves, because I don't trust auto-resolve. But, uh, let's get to it. Okay, so, Dubois. Let's hide in the trees. Can't wait for anyone else to get in. So we can speed up deployment here. So reinforcements can actually get involved. Come on, people. I, I hate how it... How it doesn't put them in order. It's really annoying. Arrows ready! Okay, move over there. You move over there. You guys line up here. And uh, all you lot can get in the front. Good. And now we'll speed things up. Boggy. Boggy day, isn't it? And that's, wow, that's a big cliff. Let's go straight down. Huh. Anyway. Still moving in. Lovely. Lovely. Come on, guys. Come on, trebuchets. Come on. 
Good boys. All right, good. Now we need to move forwards. Uh, some more. Okay. That uh, that weird sort of um, sort of a sounds a bit like a violin, but I'm sure it's not actually a violin. I'm sure it's something more fancy. Uh, that sounds straight out of The Witcher in the soundtrack. There. There it is again. I don't know what that is. Anyone know what instrument that is? It sounds great. It's really atmospheric. It's just like the. It just seems to be the instrument for uh, game soundtracks these days. <laughs> All right. How are the trebuchets looking? Trebuchets looking good. Trebuchets looking good. Excellent. Uh, and also, what I might do is actually send her up on her own, so I can start blasting these guys with uh, awaking to the wood. Although perhaps a wind blast would be better. Let's let's send up send up this lass instead. And Trebuchet is starting to fire. Nice. I mean, I hate that they're aiming for the, the loose formation units, but I love that they're hitting them a bunch. So uh, unexpected, to say the least. Okay. Yeah, let's head over there. He goes head over there. Trebuchet's got some good range. Speak the devil. <laughs> nice. Uh, eh. Not the best hits. Not the best hits. Okay. Oh, we need to get so much closer before we can hit them. Uh, I might be able to hide in these trees and hit them. That'd be pretty gold. Oh, oh, no. Emil's on his way. Okay. Hmm. And not bad, not bad. Happy with that. Pretty happy with that. Not ecstatic, but certainly pretty happy. That was a good little hit. No kills, of course. Just a bunch of uh, a lot of damage, if not kills. You know. Okay, wonderful. Uh, let's go with ooh across here next. Nice. Again, no kills, just damage. How much damage has she done? None. Oh, that's swordsman. Whoops. <laughs> 6,200. That's a huge amount of value. She's getting a bit shot now, though, which I'm not happy about. But, uh, so are they. Okay. Um, hide in the trees, I suppose. <laughs> Take the ground. Oh, this is too juicy. Check this out. Bloody marvellous. She's even got some kills now. Uh, and... Oh, and now it, she's just going to get all the kills. Dubois, you. You cheeky so-and-so. You with your 50 kills. You didn't do the work. You know you didn't. Ah, oh, pure cheek. The cheek of that girl. And uh, even Emil von Corden has been just shot to pieces, which is marvellous. And here comes another. <laughs> the lady's got a lot of power. Power of the lady? It's a lot of power. It's an awful lot of power. Really can't... Really can't argue with that. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, always smashing. Uh, we are kind of out of magic now, though. We are out of it. We're out of magic. Alright. The lion's will. Okay. Get stuck in, everybody. Everyone charging. Have a good time. Okay, good. So, yeah, shots being fired. Wonderful. And, let's see. Do I want to hit them now? Kinda. A little bit. Alright, you're having a good time. That's what I like to see. Yeah, let's just let him get stuck in. And Emil von Gordon getting absolutely trounced, which is fantastic to see. Uh, Peasant Bowman having fun time. 
You lot will do great. And yeah, now things are starting to shatter. Shouldn't be long before we get army losses. If he manages to kill Emil von Corden, there. Oh, there he goes. It's probably going to upset some people. Yeah, here we go. They're all starting to get very upset. Those swordsmen did nothing. They just watched. <laughs> Taking no damage. I mean, now they have. This is what happens when you're unchivalrous and you just watch your countrymen die. Okay, this is what happens. You get kicked in the face with a fl by a flying horse. Flying horse kick. That's how you get... That's how you get dealt with if you do that. I mean, everyone else is a lot more chivalrous, and they're all pincushions, so I don't know what's best, really. Decisive victory. Alright, so there we have it. Um, so they're going to be wiped out completely. We are going to offer redemption, although it's only actually going to restore the Prophetess's health. That's the problem with having reinforcing armies. Uh, now, I think I might actually ransom them instead. I might actually ransom them. And what's nice about this is my head cannon, right, Ambre de Bois... Which is um, amber. It's just amber, isn't it? Anyway, amber. Um, in my head cannon, she's 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 bewitched some of the survivors. Okay, because that's the thing. the The agents of the lady are a lot more sort of um, they're a lot more sinister and a lot cleverer, and uh, their their chivalry means nothing to them. So we're sending them packing. You know, seemingly a bad thing for these guys. No, no, no. The bad thing is actually them being acceptable. We want them to buy them back. So it seems sore for them. Just wait until we start getting information from our agents within their ranks. That's my headcanon. So, mercenary. Extra casualty replacement rate. That's lovely. That's really nice. Can't equip that anyone, though. I guess that's one for uh, Mary Setskus. Otherwise it would have equipped automatically. Nope, guess not. Okay, so who can have this then? Before. Oh, and a hedge wizard for Mercedes. So, why couldn't I have... Oh, you've already got a mercenary. Is that it? It didn't seem to say that it was being equipped, though. I'm very confused. Okay, that was equipping. Oh. The pop-up. No, it doesn't say it's equipping on anyone. It would normally say. Like it has here, it's being equipped. Stolen from the enemy, but it didn't say it's... That's very strange. But what it is equipping. That's really bizarre. Huh. I've never seen that. Uh, anyway, let's go with... Uh, so I was thinking worship is the Grail, though currently we have nowhere... We have nothing to equip. Uh, we have nothing to buff, because we have no army here. So I think I'm just going to go away from the wood. I know, a bit boring, but... Whatever. It's all good. I am the and we can head back that way quite a distance, which is good. I have seen your heart. Uh... Your coming was foretold. I've got literally another rebellion Divotee now, are we? Wow. King Luan well, that's annoying. Was that rebellion? That was our rebellion. Like, they had a rebellion. There should be... That should be dipping, shouldn't it? My blade is ready. Oh, well, whatever. Let's head over this way. We're going to be doing a lot of fighting, guys. <laughs> We're going to be doing a lot of fighting. Uh, I may have to affect my income a bit and just recruit some more troops here so we have something that can guard this. Uh, Marienburg has a eh, good mix of archers and infantry. We do have some foot squires in the, uh, in the garrison, which is quite nice. Yeah, I think we'll go with um, a couple more spearmen, men at arms, and peasant bowmen. So we will be losing income from our farms here. Our upkeep will go up. It may be a bit costly, but it's more costly if we lose territory, so we're just going to have to deal with it. Warrior. So, imminent rebellion, fine, bloody bloody blah, but this is going to be where we end the episode, so it, none of it matters. It's all good. <laughs> Lovely. So, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> making some pretty silly mistakes, but it's, it's a casual campaign. Okay, we're not taking this one too seriously. Because, uh, as I said, I'm still not A1 yet. Hopefully by the end of the campaign I'll be right as rain. But uh, until then, I simply can't take any more time off. There's no sick pay, right? I don't get sick pay on YouTube. So um, the week that this is going out, so if you're watching this, you know, at the time that it goes out, um, go check out um, nexus.com slash Janet. It's my storefront, and uh, you can buy keys there. I get double commission this week. So if you want to help the channel out, if there are any games that you're looking for, you can search for them there. But there is all the Warhammer 
uh, you know, Total Warhammer 1 and 2 content there, the base games and all the DLCs, if you're missing any, great. Also, Warhammer 3 pre-orders, as well as a bunch of other, uh, mostly Warhammer games on there, on my storefront already that you can look at. And there's a search box, so you can search the whole website, but I'll still get a commission, so long as you're searching from Nexus dot com slash Janet. So um, it'd be a great help to me and it would really make up for sort of lost um, income from last month. Uh, I hate to have to do this but like, you know, it's I've got to pay bills. I've got to pay bills and uh, being ill doesn't help that. So I know it's a pain but anyway, no pressure but if you happen to be in the market for some games or DLC then now would be a great time um, to do it. It gives you a Steam key so you know you don't have to buy the whole catalogue on. It's not a new platform or anything. So um, yeah, anyway. So that's that. So um, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys. Thanks for watching.